tell him that. He'll be he'll be really offended. <laughs> How's classes going? Yeah. Hell yeah. How'd you do? Did you hear from Refract? They're so busy. Do you know why we're out here today? Do you know why we're out here today? Well, free and CUNY, but also they're trying to make, uh, they're trying to increase class sizes. Baruch already has the largest average class size of any of the 25 CUNY campuses. Are you in addition to classes? Well, if you have a, if you like work a job as a student, then you have less sections to choose from. So it's very inconvenient. Teachers are getting, you know, let go or like, or they're just having to do more work for the same amount of pay. And in the meantime, CUNY is funding all sorts of extra police presence on campus right now to shut down free speech and student protests. So they got that money so they don't have to hear your voices, right? So. What's your name? Hi, Aya. Aya, nice to meet you. Evan. Wait, I, uh, have you been involved with the, no, 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 different Aya. All right. Well, good to see you both. But nice to meet you, Aya. Yeah. Um, we got a free cutie. Uh, <laughs> Any sound bites for the union uh, live stream? <laughs> Stan, don't go anywhere. You're next. Hello. <laughs> There's Stan Y. Amazing. And our amazing grievance counselor. Hi, Caitlin. Any sound bites for the YouTube live stream of our funding CUNY event? Hell yeah. Thanks, PSC, for the Indian food for us and our students today. Hi, Maria. I got a sound bite for the YouTube stream today. Yeah, yeah, I, as I said, whatever needs doing. Doesn't do all their head, but they still think that's all. Hold them on it. That's why we're out here today. We're calling them on it. Thanks, Maria. Everybody loves Nathan, you got a soundbite for our YouTube live stream today? <laughs> it's a hot take. We need smaller class sizes, not bigger class sizes. We need more funding, not less funding. What? <laughs> We need a free peony. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Wait, did you think of your sound bite now? Oh, Professor okay. Bailey. And we need to fund and support that because it is a unparalleled quality of education that we need. Unparalleled. Unparalleled quality of education in an unparalleled city. Thank you, Professor Bailey. Professor Bailey won the Mentorship Service Award yesterday. Yeah, let's go. We're fighting a fun cutie over here. We got free food for you today. They're trying to make your class sizes bigger. They're trying to cut courses. What? Do y'all know why we're out here today? Why you're in line for free food? No budget cuts. No budget cuts. Absolutely. They're trying to make your class sizes bigger. They're trying to cut courses. No budget cuts. We don't like budget cuts. No, but you know what they got a budget for? What? 
more police so that you can't peacefully protest on campus. Four million dollars they just passed. Yeah, we got subway ads. Let's get an equitable classroom. How about that? How is it? Free CUNY. We need more budget. We need more for our teachers. We need more for y'all so we can give y'all more. Let's go. Thank you. Joe, what's your hot take? What's your sound bite? Yeah. The olive is not as delicious. That's what it tastes better than a free cutie. You lies? Yeah. Stuart, Stuart Davis, what do you got to say? Chair of the Baruch chapter. Stan Wine, chapter secretary. <laughs> Stan, how long have you been a cutie? You're probably not going to believe me. But uh, I started Hunter College in 1981 as an adjunct, and I started as a student in 1973. Wow. And how long have you been fighting the same thing? Low salaries? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Forever. Hey. Um, uh, are we going to start soon? We're, this is, we're starting. We're doing the, the, the speeches and stuff. Speaking will start at 1230. And you're starting. I thought you were. Saying, I hear you. Oh, is this on live stream? Yeah. In a few minutes, yeah. We need pay and job stability for our adjunct faculty, our most exploited workers. Look at salaries over the last 10 years. Ch Chancellor and provost salary up 13%. Faculty, HEOs, adjuncts, grad students who teach all down around an average of four to five percent over the last decade. That ain't right. We gotta read out the percentages. Gina, what's your hot take? What do we need? Yeah, what's your sound bite for the live stream? <laughs> no, you're doing the work, yes. Another sound bite. The, the, the extra security that CUNY wants to hire, $600,000 per week. One hundred adjunct classes per week. The money for that extra, right? For every week of that, could be a hundred more adjuncts getting jobs. How many advisors? I guess we see what uh, CUNY really uh, cares about funding. Not these incredible adjuncts, but more police, fencing, shutting down our student voices. Hey, wouldn't you guys love it if you had a free CUNY? Do you know it was free until 1976 for any resident of New York City, any of the five boroughs? Wouldn't that be amazing? Why don't we have that anymore? We don't know. We do have some ideas because that's when this college started representing more women and students of color. And then you see all of a sudden there's tuition, right? So... It's not a mystery of what CUNY has been doing to its students. So we want to end racist austerity here. We want to make CUNY free again. We want to feed our students. How is it? Is it good? Hell yeah.
Look at all these students out here. We need to listen to them. They want smaller class sizes. They want more attention in the classroom. They want their educators adequately compensated for their labor. They want their staff adequately compensated for their labor. They don't want the money to pump only when it's for, for things that don't benefit education. They want us to stop running CUNY like a business. Hi. Hi, Holly. You're not muted, so I hear you on the Zoom. Can I introduce you? This is Stuart Davis. We're live on YouTube, the on PSC. YouTube. Um, We're introducing the chair of the PSC Union, Stuart Davis, to lead off the speaking today. Woo! Chapter, here, here, the Woo! Woo! New York City, we are arguing that there should be no cuts to CUNY. Come on, guys. No cuts to CUNY! No cuts to CUNY! <laughs> All right, I'm going to say a few words if I can find them. We say no cuts to CUNY. Here are some cuts we need to fight. In mid-March, our chapter learned that almost 40 adjunct sections of public speaking classes in, department, in the Department of Communication Studies were going to be cut in response to an overage. Shame. <laughs> this is at Baruch College, a school where our president likes to say again and again, we are the only CUNY not suffering financially. Why? As a result of these cuts, communication classes have gone up from 15 to 24. Shame. When we confronted the president and provost about this, 
the president said in a cynical fashion that we were well known for living within our means and we all need to tighten our belts and get meaner and leaner. If I've ever heard it. Yep. When we fought back with a petition organized by the people out here today, yep. the provost wouldn't even receive it. That ain't she right. walked right by. She pretended she was on her phone. She also declared via email that there were no budget cuts. I say, tell that to the people who've lost classes. Tell that to the students whose classes are going up in enrollment. And tell that to our colleagues whose pedagogical integrity is threatened. Yep. Yes. I want to tell you one more thing. This is not going to stop. We found out last week that in the business school, BPL 51,000 is going from 48 to 40, sorry, yeah, 28 to out of full-timers while making part-timers even more marginalized. There's three asks, three asks, but I want to end with. Everybody say one more time. No. No cuts for CUNY. No cuts for CUNY. No cuts for CUNY. No cuts for CUNY. Number two, please sign our petition. We're getting QR code now. We need your signatures. Number three, come out if you can on May 20th to support our members as they engage in civil disobedience for a good contract. Thank you very much. Woo All right. I think the mic, careful of the mic so you can hear me. Yeah. Hello, television audience. We are now here with Evan Smith, our chapter vice chair and lecturer in English. Uh, I would say that becoming a lecturer from an adjunct after a decade changed my life. And I, that was able to happen because there was funding put into education. Woo! But what we so often see is funding put into anything but education. Change! And instead, our most exploited laborers, our adjunct faculty, they're the ones who are going to not receive any more pay for teaching more students. Shame! This is really Ooh. of a university that calls itself the People's University and claims to put... In the meantime, just last week, the board of trustees that runs all of CUNY did not even bat an eye to approve four dollars for more police and fencing on our campus. Students who are protesting for something they believe in, instead of funding education, they're funding cops. They're funding oppression. That's right. They're making this place a corporate military state. Shame. So we need to fight back. We need to sign this petition. And we need to be in solidarity with all 25 campuses. That's because right. Baruch may claim to be doing uh, You can see the statistic right here. The only oh, salaries that have gone up in the last decade are administrators. Shit. All the educators' salaries have gone down. So Shit. I want to ask President Wu and Provost Essig, are you on our side, educators? Or are you the side of neoliberal corporate business model of the public university? Hell, woo! Okay. woo. Thank you for hearing me out today. Yeah! Woo! Okay. Uh, we're going to pass this over to our our Holly, uh, colleague, Holly <laughs> Clark. Well, I'm going to start calling our Holly, who's at John Jay. Um, Rachel, thank you. Yes, if you show the petition in the chat, that would be great for us. So I'm going to unspotlight us, and then we're going to... Holly, just give me one second here, Holly. Okay. Holly, you ready? I'm going to spotlight you. I'm ready. Fine. So good afternoon, everyone. It's great to see everybody assembled at John Jay 
and around um, CUNY. Um, and to do what? To stand up, to fight for what uh, we need and our students need to fight against these draconian budget cuts that are unnecessary and um, are premature at best. The CUNY has the money and should be fighting for more. Um, so uh, we're going to go around to some here speakers from around CUNY and I'd like to, oh, I should introduce myself. My name is Holly Clark and I've been at John Jay for over 25 years teaching in the public management department. Um, I've been, for most of that time, I've been a union activist and adjunct activist and I also am a chair of a very successful and productive um, adjunct committee called the CAP Platform Committee. It's open to new members. Um, we've met every other week since 2019 and been a voice to advocate for adjuncts and for CUNY as a whole um, throughout that time. So I'm going to start with Lynn Turner who's at SLU and is the vice president for part-time personnel at the Professional Staff Congress or PSC, which is the union for faculty and staff. Lynn, are you available? I am available. Um, okay. Hi. hi, Holly, and hi, everybody. And yeah, looking great over there at Baruch and elsewhere. I'm really excited that there are so many great ins happening both online and in person um, across CUNY at this time. And really, you know, much appreciation to all those that, all of the work that all of the organizers across campus, um, all of us put in, you know, to pre everyone put in to, to make this happen. Um, I, I basically really just wanted to like send greetings um, because of the importance of this work, because it's really important for us to be getting in front of making sure that there isn't just this continued pattern of budget cuts, of layoffs, and of, and of the continued erosion of job security that's CUNY, you know, management, CUNY administration really, you know, is is wedded to to this, you know, to sort of this neoliberal um, austerity model and this, you know, kind of very corporate model of, of running a university, which is, you know, completely in conflict with the important work of, of teaching and learning and, and the, you know, the importance of CUNY for for us as 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 part timers. Right. I, I actually um, I, I teach um, as an adjunct lecturer at um, at the School of Labor and Urban Studies, also at LaGuardia Community College, um, uh, although I'm on a subline um, this semester, but it is just one semester. Um, so I certainly know personally the difficulty of every, you know, really sort of making sure that it's the need to sort of scrounge up not only work, but also health insurance in a semester by semester basis. Um, and I, I, you know, I also, given that I'm spending so much time dealing with bargaining right now, really want to point to the importance of us winning um, not a good contract across the board for all of our members, which also has to do with winning a contract for our students, but also the winning around the multi-year appointment demands, because CUNY really wants to decimate that. And really, at this point, whether or not we qualify, I'm actually not on a multi-year, our ability not only to not allow them to decimate it, but to make it stronger and us joining together and fighting for it is really critical to our ability to win everything that we need to win. So that's all I'm going to say and onward everybody. Woo, yeah. Um, thank you, Lynn. Um, that was uh, great, um, and uh, Evan, maybe, yeah. So um, next, I'd like to move to LaGuardia and hear from two speakers from LaGuardia, um, and the first is Scott Ethier. Scott, are you here? I'm here. Thanks, Holly. Okay, great. Um, am I able to share my screen? Hey, everyone. Um, I will, I will, hold on. 
I think I am here. Hold on. I, I don't know that we let everyone be. Okay, try it now. Yeah, great. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Fantastic. Okay. So um, welcome, everyone. Uh, this is such a cool event. Thank you for, for being here. Um, I wanted to just spend a, a minute or two talking about... Uh, your invisible A cut. My name is Scott Ethier. I'm an adjunct at LaGuardia Community College. Um, and I want to talk about how inflation has eaten up your CUNY paycheck. Um, so the price of everything rises from year to year, and we call that rise in prices every year inflation. And if your raises don't keep up with inflation, that means essentially you're taking a hidden but a very real pay cut, which I call the invisible pay cut. And why is this pay cut invisible? Well, it's invisible because when you check every week, you, you see the numbers going up and up a little bit. And you say, okay, that's great. I'm making a little bit more money than I was last year. But if our raises don't keep up with inflation, that money is worth less than it was. It buys us fewer of the things that we need. It pays less of our rent. And that is the invisible pay cut. And we can actually see over the last few years how inflation has eroded um, our real wages. Uh, the blue line that you see on top, that is inflation. That is the increase in inflation every year. That red line, that is the increase in our wages. Anytime the red line is below the blue line, that means we are taking an invisible pay cut. And you can see with the inflation of 2021, 2022, um, and the fact that our wages have basically stagnated since our contract expired in 2022, um, we're taking a big hit from the invisible pay cut. Um, who's impacted by the invisible pay cut? Well, faculty, staff, part-timers, full-timers, really everybody. There's nobody in our bargaining unit who isn't impacted by the invisible pay cut. Um, let me give you some, some really concrete examples of this. If you're an adjunct lecturer uh, on the very, very top step, um, in 2017, you were making just a little bit over $89 an hour. In 2024, if you are on the top step, you are making just above $77 when we adjust our wages for inflation. Adjuncts, that is a pay cut, an invisible pay cut of 13.5%, which is not great. Um, but full-timers, full-time faculty, uh, full-time staff, HEOs, you are not immune from this either. Um, HEOs and full-time faculty in 2017, you were making just over $128,000 a year. That was you're in the very, very top step as a full professor or a HEO. Um, in 2024, you're actually only making in inflation adjusted dollars uh, just over $111,000. Uh, $111, and again, that is coincidentally an invisible pay cut of 13%. Um, and the really bad news is that in our next contract, CUNY wants to lock in this invisible pay cut. What can you do to, phys to fight the invisible pay cut? Well, thing number one is talk to your fe fellow workers about the invisible pay cut. Let them know that it's happening. Let them know what it is. Let them know why it impacts them. Second thing, tell our union's bargaining team that we need a wage proposal that beats inflation. If we don't demand it, we will not get it. That is just a fact. Um, second of all, participate in union actions that build our power at the bargaining table, such as our May 20th protest at the, uh, at the Board of Trustees on uh, May 20th, coming up in a couple Mondays. Um, get involved with your campus action team, like the ca campus action team that's hold hosting this event at Baruch and other union uh, groups like the PSE Committee for Adjuncts and Part-Timers. Thank you. Let's organize and fight the invisible pay cut. Thanks.
Hi, Holly. Sorry, sorry. I That's did. Right. I committed the sin of keeping myself mute. I never do that. But anyway, thank God, you. God, that was amazing. Yeah. Scott, that was a wonderful presentation. And thank you for breaking down the um, these uh, uh, numbers, which I'm sure are challenging for many, and explaining what it means to get ra not get raises that at least meet inflation and that to make gains, we need to get raises above in the rate of inflation. So thank you so much and for pointing out how we can, what to do next and how we can advocate. That's fantastic. So we're gonna hear from somebody else at LaGuardia about some something LaGuardia did that's very impressive with uh, by trying to ensure that courses would not be, try to save as many courses and sections as possible. So for that, we're going to hear from Rachel Ewens. Rachel? Uh, good, af good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for coming to this. I, um, I just want to, uh, a, a year ago in 2003, LaGuardia presented a petition that really was prefaced by a long discussion on the reasons why class cancellations were a very bad idea for the college. Um, and Scott, help me out on this. Uh, the petition uh, seemed to work fairly well um, at least a year ago. Now, I'm not sure that that's been really true this past spring. Um, I can. Uh, the petition was prefaced by a lot of discussions about why class, classes shouldn't be canceled, that retaining students uh, would grow enrollment um, because students don't re-enroll for class for classes. Students who are graduating need those classes. Um, and so it was really prefaced within our chapter by a lot of discussion on on the strengths of keeping class numbers low, like enroll, enrolling classes at five students uh, and upwards. Is that is that pretty correct, Scott? A year ago? I'm going to share the, the petition that was eventually um, presented to President Adams, our president. Let me find it. I'm not sure that this is. Might not be it. Sorry. Uh, here it is. Um, uh, so this this uh, this is the, the 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 document we presented. Um, last spring uh and i think didn't about 200 people sign that petition scott a great number of people signed the petition a great number of faculty so if you want to take an action on your college um and you know this is here's a model that you can use uh reasons why classes shouldn't be canceled they leave students stranded without the classes they need to graduate they're unable to find replacement sections that fit into their schedule, increasing the chance that they'll drift away from the college and deepening the enrollment crisis. Leaving adjunct faculty, our largest group of educators at the college without jobs and health insurance, uh, and creating additional problems for our already understaffed student support workers. So class cancellations really do affect adjunct, uh, adjunct uh, courses. Um, um, and uh, I think I think Adams was fairly. I think he. I think you, you know this. This also involved the date of class cancellations. I think they pushed the date back when we presented this petition. Um, before before we did this, I'm pretty sure that um, they were kind of jumping on class cancellations. Um, without recognizing the circumstance that students often uh, register for classes later than those classes are canceled. So that was another consideration. Um, and Scott, how would you add to this? I, I think all that is, is great, Rachel, and thanks for summarizing that. The only thing, other thing I would add to it is, I think maybe in the biggest picture, one of the things that we were able to do in our chapter at LaGuardia 
is really make class cancellations an issue. It's something that people pay attention to now. At the be- at every opening sessions now, the pre- the administration always makes a point of talking about and addressing class cancellations. Um, it's an issue that's now, you know, the the administration at Guardia knows that they can't get away with it in this, in secret. They can't do it in the dark. Um, they're going to get they're going to get blowback from us if if they do it. And I, I think the next point that was then made, Scott, th- this year is to, um, and and I, I think you can inform us further, uh, engage department chairs uh, with the um, position of not of participating as little as possible in class cancellations. Um, so that I know that's not easy for chairs, I I don't think, but. Um, and I don't know how many chairs actually signed this this petition, but um, I think the organizing point being how do we engage chairs in working with us to support uh, the uh, policies of allowing classes with lower enrollments to run. So that seems like the next stage of an effort like this. What would you say, Scott? Absolutely. I think this is, I think that's a great, a great summary of it. Okay. Well, thank you so much, um, Rachel and Scott. And that's a wonderful action that you, you, you did and, um, and a successful. So I think a round of applause for LaGuardia. Woo! Thank you, LaGuardia. We have wonderful chapter chairs and a, a very strong chapter at LaGuardia. Well, it, that, that's what that's what Union Solidarity can can um, accomplish, and hopefully we can do it um, throughout the other campuses and try to uh, make course cancellations a on the radar and uh, and um, as Scott said that. Every president will think twice about um, canceling classes at the last minute or forcing chairs to reduce sections. That, so, that actually, we, we went and presented that petition to Adams in his office. And I think that interpersonal exchange, which was about 10 faculty members and the president, which was about a 20 minute exchange, made it made an impression on Adams. <laughs> well, that is that's another tip and thank you for sharing that so other campuses maybe can follow that model and certainly you can get in touch with scott or rachel as um uh, as advisors in that effort i should think um i i was going to speak next but i'd like to call on lynn or ken vance either one of you to talk about it's a good moment for us to talk about the May 20th event. So who would like to speak about that? That's a union wide, that's a place where we can show our force and demonstrate our solidarity. Lynn? Yeah, I could give it. Um, I, you know, I don't actually know what the most recent um, in terms of like what sort of action it is going to be. Um, but basically May 20th is the is the Board of Trustees meeting, right? So not the public hearing, which they the Board of Trustees has like consistently just been moving online when they don't want to actually hear us, right? We had huge numbers of people, you know, a full house anyway, um, turning out at the last one. And then this one they moved online. Um, you know, but this is this is their actual meeting. and you know they you know, so the the idea is to do really a strong action at this meeting um, and to really to get out large numbers of people. I believe it starts at 430. I'd have to look at that. Right. So it's, you know, but to get out large numbers of people um, out there in an action that is going to have a militant character of some way, although I, as I said, I don't know what all the details of that will be, but we also need to show that there are many of us, you know, really that are, are sick of management's excuses. I mean, every single thing that they say in bargaining now, it, you know, really demonstrates their, their, that they 
really, they sort of back off at things they've even done in the past, right? You know, like talk, discuss conversion lines, right? You know, those sort of dedicated lines where, you know, they're, they, they, it's about sort of having ultimate management control and ultimate flexibility and ultimate contingency for when it comes to adjuncts and really trying to get our, you know, to make it so that our wage demands, which have been, were much higher than unfortunately many of our other city and state unions, right? So it, you know, it's just why the force that we need in order to win these demands, both for the across the board demands, but we have lots of equity demands. We still have a demand for adjunct pay parity, right? We have, you know, so we have, you know, and for many titles, right, that also like CLTs and others that that also need equity demand. So there's all kinds of things across the board. And it's really just, I think, really crucial at this time as we're going into the end of the semester, really to make sure that they know that we are not going to take just any contract. Like we want a just contract. And we're, we're going to be out there. We have to be out there. Like we have to be out there to fight for it. That's all. Great, thank you, Lynn. And I'm just going to share the people on Zoom can see it, but for the people watching and uh, at Baruch um, and other places, this uh, May 20th um, demonstration is at CUNY Central, which is located at 205, 205 East 42nd Street at 4 p.m. 205 East 42nd Street, CUNY Central. May 20th, 4 p.m. Um, okay, um, so I, uh, I'm i gonna pause for a moment and fill you in a little bit on what has happened at John Jay, which has been devastating. So I'll call on myself and then hopefully we'll have an opportunity to go to um, Yasmina um, at City College who will speak and, and maybe show us around a little bit of what City College looks like at, at, at post the police um, um, action to dislodge, you know, to remove the encampment. So, um, okay, so a few words on John Jay. Give me just a second. Um, okay, so, um, as I shared with you, I, I teach at John Jay College on uh, public management. I've also taught in economics. I've been there for a long, many years, but I don't have job security. There are, though we've get, made some gains, important gains for job security for adjuncts that we are fighting hard to preserve and expand the bargaining table, there are many adjuncts that aren't included because of the eligibility criteria. So we need to fight for fight for expanding eligibility for job security. Um, as we all know, if you lack job security as an adjunct, you face a lot of anxiety. You're in danger of losing your health insurance. And there's another element of uh, your departments are, are aren't sure whether you'll be there one semester to the next, the students as well. And as we now see across the country, how we see uh, how important it is for faculty to have job security in order to maintain academic freedom. We are the majority of teaching faculty at, at CUNY and in many colleges across the country. Um, most of us lacking any protection and therefore have more difficulty maintaining the academic freedom that is vital for our students and our educational mission. So um, I just want to say a few things about the job cuts, I mean the uh, budget cuts. Um, while, while the union has been fighting to strengthen CUNY's foundation by seeking more state and city funding, and many of us have been part of that effort, pressing for a strong contract, et cetera, CUNY management has been undermining it. Um, Mid-year, CUNY labeled nine colleges as colleges of concern, including John Jay, and targeted them for more mid-year budget cuts. 
cuts that were premature and unnecessary. Let me just quickly rattle off the nine. John Jay, Queens, BMCC, York, Brooklyn, City Tech, CSI, KCC, and SPS. As we've seen from Baruch, you don't have to be even um, one of the colleges of concern to face course reductions, uh, draconian course reductions. But certainly the colleges of concern have been under tremendous pressure. The union has rightly called out management for turning challenges, and their, their CUNY is facing challenges as it overcomes the um, pandemic impacts, but CUNY management has turned it into a false crisis. Applications and enrollments are stabilizing or rising. They're definitely rising at the community colleges. And many of the colleges, even this year, had no actual budget deficits, which was CUNY's rationale for the cuts. So at the outset, I want to address something important. Did John Jay face a fiscal crisis this year? Did John Jay even have a real budget deficit? And the answer is no. Um, John Jay um, had 17 million in unspent funds from the prior year, funds that were based on federal aid awarded to the college for pandemic re recovery. So these are funds that will not be recurring, but they still were available. It would, it would, it would, it's more than enough to cover any shortfall in expenditures this year, next year, um, and possibly the one after as enrollment recovers. So this was in a sense a manufactured crisis as CUNY Central insisted that John Jay administration pretend the 17 million isn't there for the moment and do their budget planning and um, to try and uh, to try to achieve budget balance, so they labeled John Jay as having what they called a structural deficit. So here are some of the impacts of in spring twenty four, John Jay offered four hundred fewer courses, or four hundred fewer sections than in spring twenty three. Four hundred fewer. Chairs were pressed to reduce the schedule and cut classes that didn't meet enrollment thresholds. Many of these were at the last minute. Uh, and CUNY argued, I mean, our management said, this is not going to have any impact on, on um, our ability to serve our students or our educational mission. No impact? Here are some of the impacts. Larger classes, as other people have spoken, fewer classes mean more students are packed into existing sections. Um, the administration at our school call, calls that improved seat efficiency. Um, yet our students and, uh, benefit from smaller, no. and larger classes. We also have a shrinking curriculum with fewer course offerings, almost every department, and this limits students' choices of classes and choices of times that they can attend in person, which is very problematic. Um, and last but not least, there was a 2.1 million savings in reduced spending on adjunct faculty. When courses are canceled or no longer offered, the faculty have been teaching them lose income or are laid off entirely. So with 400 fewer sections spring tw this spring 24, we think it amounts to at least 150 experienced faculty members who often have been teaching at John Jay for years lost their jobs or at least lost significant income. No job, no income, no health insurance. There are other budget cuts that were also put into place that that reduced the ability of staff to serve students by not filling positions, um, and that continues. They also reduced non-teaching adjuncts and college assistants who often provide key support to various um, services and departments, and they also limited full-time hiring. Um, what about executive compensation, Comp You know, pay for people at the top? Well, at John Jay, it increased Though it wasn't only salary increases, it also they had added six deans 
um, and uh, severance pay and legal settlements um, that that wrote uh, made that figure rise. So John Jay does face challenges like other schools as we recall in enrollment and retention, but these measures will only make it worse. And John Jay is not in an imminent budget crisis. Um, what CUNY has done is a recip recipe for aggravating our enrollment goals, the retention crisis, and diminishing the type of education our students deserve. Let me just end by saying we as adjunct faculty are not invisible, we are not disposable, and we will not be silent as CUNY management undermines our students, our ability to serve our students, and the educational mission of CUNY. So um, now I'd like to turn and we're going to head to um, City College. Uh, Yasmina, are you able to join us? She, Yasmina's had difficulty. I'm here, I'm here Holly. I got it. Oh, this, is, this is Evan, AKA Holden. Uh, who is speaking next, Holly? Yeah, Yasmina. Okay. If they are in in able to sign on, they had I, difficulty signing on, so I don't know if they are here. Yasmina's not here right now. Okay, so we we can't do that. Um, and I'd like to just open it up. Is there anyone on oh. Zoom that would like to um, add their voice on, you know, on the issues that we've been protesting about and say a few words. And if not, I'm gonna turn it back to Evan at Baruch. Okay, Evan, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Holly. It was amazing to hear from everyone. And uh, I just wanna say, well, let me flip this camera so you, you can see me. Hold on one second. Yeah. Here I am. I just want to say, I think uh, we need to do, um, oh, we hear, I'm hearing Lori Gallo might want to say something. Lori, should I uh, put you on? Okay, sure. I'm, I'm here and I'm a John Jay non-teaching adjunct in the library. And the reason I'm asking is Holly mentioned uh, something called the CAP Platform Committee. And I just wondered if she would talk a little bit about that because I've never, I don't know about it at all. Thank you. Um, sure. Um, the platform committee is a committee that is part of CAP. CAP is an official committee of the union that represents part-timers. So that includes adjuncts, but other part-time titles. Um, and the platform committee, which is open to other other members, just if you're interested in joining it, just put your name in the chat and um, I'll and let me know and, and your email. And what the platform committee has focused on, it has been a research and strategy committee. So we have met to discuss um, a, a look, look at, a, well, one of our first goals was to come up with a vision for the university and for the union, a vision for ending contingency, ending the precar precariousness of adjunct faculty in such a way that it doesn't get rid of us, but embraces us. And that includes non-teaching adjuncts as well as teaching adjuncts. Um, one approach to ending contingency is to get rid of contingents. Uh, we're not we're not advocating that. And so this we have come up with something called we we spent uh, about a year developing something called the vision the vision for equity and um, justice for part timers. Uh, so it's a long lengthy document where would like anybody and everybody to read it, make comments. And it also helped to guide the union 
on some of its provisions uh, within the contract bargaining. So we've continued to work on strategizing, trying to come up with ideas to help also the larger CAP committee um, move forward in how, what do we need to know? What do we need to research to conduct this fight? And how do we build power? Those are kind of the two goals. And we'd love to have you as part of the committee as a non-teaching adjunct. You said you go to meetings every week. That would be, is it every week? No, every other week. Um, and the, and this vision is called Vision for Equity and something else, but I forgot. <laughs> uh, yes. For part timers. Okay. No, for part timers. Yeah. Um, I'm going to hope that Ken, who's on here, or or Scott, can actually find a link to it and put it in the chat. So I oh, think that would be great. That yeah. would be great. Right. And um, Lori, why don't you put your email in the chat so that I can send it to you as well yes i'll, I'll do that now. It it's Friend, in the chat and i wanted to say um yasmina is here as well and i wondered if they wanted to speak or yes. um hi okay. can you hear me yes okay spot. well i just wanted to share i'm right outside the city college sorry it took a second to get online um tech issues. <laughs> so I'm not going to spend too much time showing you the police presence here because I don't know if they're going to um, start yelling at me for recording. So I just wanted to say hi from City College. I actually came here because I found out that some of my students were not getting emails, had no idea what's going on. So um, I guess what I just wanted to share is um, that it would be very nice if our university did not put us in this situation, if they respected everybody's right to speak, and uh, if they did not send police on our students and created this space where now um, coming to this lovely campus, which is actually really beautiful, feels like you're walking through um, some kind of police state with just so many Security, three different types of security, NYPD, right? Like all these people, um, students not feeling comfortable, nobody's feeling comfortable. So yeah, so I'm here to tell you that to me, ability to speak up, feeling safe in our um, freedom of speech is part of adjuncts issues. And we should all stand with our students in their five demands. So I will hand off, but if you're not familiar with this, I will look it up. You can find it. Okay. Thank you, Yasmina. I think uh, you can see our sign here. And, um, you know, as someone who is out at CCNY uh, two weeks ago now, um, the police presence was disturbing. And the $4 million that the bot just passed um, for more security to uh, repress student voices uh, when there's an adjunct crisis and a budget crisis, it's just um, continues to yeah. disturb me in more ways. Thank you. And thank you for bringing that up. I actually felt, to be honest, like I was prepared to speak and I feel some of this entire situation got me a little... Um, not so prepared. Um, but yeah, one thing I did want to say is that often we talk about how there's no funding. There's no funding for adjuncts. There's no funding for um, anything, right? But then when there's need to pay unnecessary, then suddenly there is money and there is funding. And, um, you know, the question is, where was this money? And where is this money when we talk about contract negotiations? Like, why is there no money when we talk about getting our contracts? getting our job security, making sure that we are paid what we deserve to be paid. And then at the same time, when it's something that we don't need, it's like, oh, here you go. There's money. So yeah, thanks. Yeah, exactly. And why is our bot made up of, you know, uh, real estate moguls, uh, investment bankers, um, private equity firms and not uh, educators or people who study pedagogy. And uh, I think, you know, what's 
what the students agree with all of their politics or not, what they're laying bare is how especially private institutions, but public institutions too, are run, uh, you know, in a way that is like a corporation and not an educational institution. And we're just, anyone who's adjuncted ever knows that. And um, these things are all interrelated. So really thank you for bringing that up. And I'll stop talking now, but uh, if anyone else wanted to say anything, I'm happy to spotlight you. And um, I'm also just wanted to say, actually, before I sit, you know, I'm so happy that we could like do this cross campus event. And I think, we got some kinks to iron out, but um, it went really great. And I, I'm so happy to meet all of you who I haven't met and look forward to meeting you in person and working on stuff uh, in the future together as well. And I really got to send a huge shout out to Holly, um, who did a lot of the heavy lifting on this. And uh, Yasmina, too, who volunteered today to help with uh, coordinating the video aspects of this. Um, you know, it was a team effort. And uh, thank you to everyone who came today and spoke. So I uh, thank you all for coming and I guess we'll close out as um thank you. That's great. So thank you all for coming. This this ends our second annual spring um cross campus event, adjunct event. Cool. Um, Holly, we're gonna we're gonna spotlight Baruch and hear from a few of the adjuncts here that haven't spoken yet. Oh, but, uh, okay. Sorry. So, um, yeah, uh, people uh, can come and go as they need. But, yes, uh, we'll please stay up. on the Zoom. You can can hear what the uh, what uh, some of the Baruch folks are sharing. Oh, great. You want them to talk? We do want some of our Baruch people to talk. Oh, um, yeah, we're 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 now kind of. Should we talk? Yep. Should I tell them? You're gonna go? Yes. All right. It's good to see you. Yeah. 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 And do you wanna do you wanna let people talk? Yep. I'm just figuring out the spotlight here. Sorry. He's doing a great job, everybody. <laughs> oh, he's gonna be muted. This is live. Okay. We're doing you guys wanna talk. Oh, I'm sorry, Yasmina's spotlight. There we go. She's my bad. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're here at Baruch. We just handed out a lot of food today. Uh, we're gonna hear from some other adjuncts and uh, GTFs and uh, and uh, full timers and staff who uh, wanted to say some some words. Thanks, bye. Uh, this is Holden Taylor, one of our incredible organizers and, and teachers here. Holden, you got anything? that you want to say as we open up the forum? Yeah, I just think it's a shame that CUNY consistently shows that it it doesn't value us as a teacher. They don't value us as teachers and they don't value their students. They value bottom line. They value uh, police. They value administrators. They value uh, the provost. They value the president who gets paid. Too. Yeah. Oh. Oh, sick. Well, for writing terrible letters every couple of weeks. <laughs> and we deserve, we as the CUNY community, as the students, as the faculty, we deserve a free CUNY. Fully funded CUNY. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you guys were hanging up. Okay. It's a really important sign when a student is getting his right now. Behind the students' legs. When they move, <laughs> Joe, how do I say your last name? I've never said it. Riccio. Riccio. Joe Riccio, another amazing GTF teacher here. GTF, I'm also adjuncting here. One of the guys here. It's really cool. Bummer. So while uh, management increases over time, we actually lose money throughout. And it's a shame because every semester we get more students we have to teach with the increase of uh, course sizes. We're not compensated for that extra work. It also makes reorganizing and redesigning courses that are historically seminars very difficult. 
again, more unpaid, out of class food labor. And it's really disappointing because they say that they love us and that they appreciate us. And then we have to find other jobs while we're teaching. Mm. Uh, it's difficult, but we're still here. This is about teaching about our students. And someone has to, someone has to uh, try to make it a little better because it seems like management uh, is actively trying to destroy people. Mm. Not to sound alarmist. Uh, it seems out. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Maria, how do I say your last name? Paholsky. Did you want to say anything else? We're, we're still live streaming here. Yes, so uh, I'm delighted at the turnout that we've had. Um, both the petition and the food is very popular, very yes. great. And uh, now it's just a matter of making the administration here and we start. Thank you, Maria. Nathan was holding down the food service. Nathan, you're on the live stream with Gina. Oh, Gina Maria. left. And Maria. Oh, yeah, and Maria. Um, you're on the live stream. You want to add anything before we close yeah, off today? Uh, join CUNY on strike. Hey, hey, there you go. Right on. Yeah, we got really good Indian food, samosas. Mar, uh, yeah, what department are you in? The nat natural sciences, right? Teach anthropology and sociology and anthropology. Cool. Do you have anything uh, you want to add on our live stream today? We're just opening it up. Sorry to put you on the spot, but. Worries. Um, I'm really encouraged by all of the support that students are thus far showing us. Um, when speaking uh, about the effects of larger class sizes and you know, with the worsening of work, uh, working conditions, uh, students uh, connect with that pretty pretty automatically. And it's, it's a really great um, show of the kind of solidarity that can exist between students and faculty here at CUNY. Uh, and I think that uh, this kind of uh, groundwork that we're laying down at the moment uh, is hopefully going to be something that we can build uh, into uh, uh, larger and stronger struggles to really fight for the funding and the resources that we need to make sure that our students have the best education that we can find. Yeah, yeah. totally agree. We'll zoom in on the sign that PSC gave us uh, to Mars Point. Students, faculty, and staff unite because we all got to unite. And it's so great to have all these amazing students out here today. A lot of them already know that CUNY was free till 1976. A lot of them already know that their course sizes are being cut. A lot of them work part-time jobs and they're saying, I have less you know, choice for classes that are required courses that I have to take. And then when I'm in those courses, I feel invisible because my adjunct professor who barely gets paid a living wage, you know, they don't have time to, to specialize or individualize instruction as much as they used to. They don't have time to scaffold to meet my needs uh, you know, as someone who is trying to learn at this university. So um, it's an easy sell with our students. Oh, here, here we have um, Caitlin, another amazing adjunct in the English department. We're on a live stream on the YouTube and uh, just enjoying the day and the event and reaching out to students. Caitlin, did you have any words you wanted to add about your experience or your feelings about the current situation at CUNY? I've been teaching uh, for like 25 years here at CUNY since 2016. What is that? 10 years? Yeah. Um, and I put my heart and soul into it. Um, there should be more funding to streamline on those who work really hard in collective gifts, there should be less cuts to the RK and we, and we want to, um, we need smaller classes in order for students to get their money's worth. It should be a free university. Um, I'm trying not to get better because I love my students. Mm. <laughs> Crazy to make someone bitter who loves what they do and, you know, comes here every day and puts their heart into it, as you said. Thanks, Caitlin.
He's another amazing professor in the English department, Dan Liebert. Dan, we're finishing our live stream off and just wondering if you had any uh, thoughts on the situation, um, funding situation here at CUNY. All right, yeah. So, I mean, um, at least when it comes to first casts and sections, it's always worse for our students when they have less contact with the faculty. And it's loads of research about one of the most important things for our students is to have uh, one individual function with their faculty. So, course caps go up, sections get cut. It's a lot harder to do that. And obviously, it's it's our practice is to have jobs, classes to teach. Um, so again, they, they need to to try. Thanks, Sam. Yeah. Absolutely agree. Our students are out here today saying, you know, they want more individualized attention. They want smaller classes, and they want uh, their professors and educators uh, and the staff on campus to have living wages and uh, you know more respect. So this isn't just coming from us; it's coming from everyone here, except the administrators, it seems. Well, I'm glad. Oh, do you, are you still doing the thing? Stuart, you got any words to sign oh, us off, maybe? Oh, I was at you for the uh, Oh, this is a hard stream day. Oh, it is? Yeah. Well, it's just, a, it's heartening to hear about the protests and all. Um, but our students, academic freedom is very important. So we passed a resolution about affirming academic freedom. And it actually goes back to principles that were affirmed back in 2016. That's right. That's right. It's been stalled a little bit. Huh. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's, it's an important issue, especially in these. Absolutely. And, and it's important for our yeah. okay. <laughs> Where are you going to be May 20th? I'm going to be marching and protesting for, for the fact that these cuts are damaging to our students and feedback. Amen. <laughs> right on. Thank you. This is our first. Hey, we're teching up here. We're we're starting to learn. Uh, you know, we're 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 Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, Holly. Bye. Okay, y'all, I'm going to log us off. Uh, this is our uh, second annual cross campus events. More to come. Um, I think you heard the uh, staff, faculty, and uh, the students today. So uh, look forward to uh, more cross campus organization next year, beyond, and maybe even this summer. Because we need a contract and uh, we need to, you know, make truly answer the call of making this the People's University and serving all of our students out in the city of New York. All right. Take care. <laughs>